This segment brought to you by Kansas Farm Bureau, the voice of agriculture. To join today or more information, go to kfb.org or find us on Facebook and Twitter. A few years ago, Kansas had a fantastic exhibit about how Kansas gave Texas the boot, and it was all about the evolution of the cowboy boot. Now, of course, Texans like to claim credit for everything, but this is one where, by golly, yes, ma'am, started right here in Kansas. Actually, uh, our dear friend Jim Hollenbeck out toward Manhattan had a little bit to do with that exhibit. So let's look back at that exhibit and then a little more in uh, teaching Texans a lesson about how Kansas gave them the boot. Our source on this story is Kansapedia, that invaluable resource of the Kansas State Historical Society. Tradition credits Charles Heyer as one of the first to invent the cowboy boot. Company promotional materials state that a Colorado cowboy stopped by the Heyer shop on his way home from the Kansas City stockyards in 1875, requesting a new pair of boots that were different from his Civil War style boots. He wanted a boot with a pointed toe that could slide more easily into a stirrup, a high slanted heel that would hold a stirrup, and a high top with a scalloped front and back so he could get in and out of his boots more easily. Charles accepted the challenge. The unknown cowboy was so pleased with Hire's work that he returned to Colorado and told others about his new boots. The brothers employed mostly immigrant craftsmen from Germany, Sweden, and Poland during the early years. They made cowboy boots for cattlemen, rodeo performers, and movie stars, such as Buffalo Bill Cody, Tom Mix, Will Rogers, and Gene Autry. To reach potential customers farther west and across the ocean, the company created mail-order catalogs with measuring charts. During World War I, the hires made boots for the officers at Fort Leavenworth and at Camp Funston. In 1961, governors from the 49 other states were outfitted with higher boots courtesy of Governor John Anderson. They were presented as part of the traditional exchange of gifts between governors during the annual Governor's Conference. Better opportunities for immigrants and a changing workforce meant that the hire company had to adapt. As early as 1911, the hires lamented that fewer young people were entering shoemaking apprenticeships, which meant that they had to hire unskilled laborers and adjust the work accordingly. They were able to maintain the quality of their boots by having each worker complete one aspect of the boot making process, as opposed to assembling a boot from start to finish. The strategy allowed the higher boot company to remain competitive for several years. In 1977, the higher name was sold to the Ben Miller Boot Company of El Paso, Texas. Despite the official end of approximately 100 years of boot making, the tradition continued at the Olathe Boot Company, which hired several former hire employees and purchased some of the hire equipment. The Olathe Boot Company was founded in 1975 and is still in operation. Today, many examples of hire products can be found in the Kansas Museum of History collection. In addition to hire boots and shoes, the collections also include patterns, last, and bootmaking equipment, as well as photographs of the owners and employees. That's it. Another great day on Around Kansas. I'll see you next week. I'm Deb Goodrich, and I will see you somewhere around Kansas. Closed captioning brought to you by Ag Promo Source. Together we grow. Learn more at agpromosource.com. And churned homemade ice cream. Let me tell you, Kansas is more than tornadoes. We're the best part of Dorothy's dream. We're the best part of Dorothy's dream. Watch Ag AM in Kansas online at agamincansas.com.